Welcome back or welcome to Jamaican Girl Big World. I'm Shanice and let's get into it. So today we're going to be talking about the Bob Marley movie review. So by now we would have all seen the Bob Marley movie. At least I'm hoping we would have all seen it. If you haven't, you still can though because it's still in theaters. So if you haven't, definitely go watch it and then come back and listen to this. So this is the Bob Marley movie review. So last month, which was Black History Month, we got black people everywhere, everywhere. And it was also Reggae Month in Jamaica. And, of course, it was Bob Marley's birthday on February 6th. So, you don't know. Tons and tons and tons and tons of things to celebrate. But anyway, so the Bob Marley movie, one of, it was claimed to be a documentary, but about Bob's life and, you know. But honestly, it really felt like it was more about, you know, Bob's role in the political civil war that was happening in Jamaica at the time between the PNP and JLP. Now, if you don't know what that is, PNP is the People's National Party and the JLP is the Jamaica Labour Party, which are the two opposing parties, political parties in Jamaica, um, because we don't have... um, what's it called, a presidential system like you guys have it here in America, we have a bipartisan um, political system. So, yeah, just to catch you up. So, yeah. So it was it was really interesting that they said it was a documentary when it really, really wasn't. If you deep it, like if you actually sit on and watch it, it really never feel like that vibe there. Granted, I understand that his role in the political civil war was really, really important. And I understand why they needed to highlight that part and why that needs to be a part of his story, because that was like a big deal. Right. However, there was more in Bob's life that I'm sure people would have liked to know. Me, 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 me. That, that me me I thought about me would I like for no <laughs> because the glimpses of his life that they did show I was very very interested in it I was like yo Bob Bob got you some things you know Bob, Bob got you some serious things so yeah because they showed when he was a child and living with his mother he was a um of a single parent household his father rejected him his father was a white man his mother was black and his father rejected him completely like saying oh that's not my child whatever whatever Bob was abandoned. Bob didn't have a father in his life. Like, he was seriously going through it. And, of course, as he got older, he was a little bit lost, you know, trying to find himself. But he always loved music. That was his thing. That was, like, his saving grace. Like, he always clung to music. He was a musician from a taller time, right? And then having met Rita, Rita Marley, his wife, um, she introduced him to Rastafarianism. She introduced him to a family. She introduced him to something bigger than himself, and he really f- clung to it. Clung to it, um, it w- because uh, it gave him a purpose. It gave him, you know, something to hold on to. It gave him hope. So that was really interesting. And I was like, Yo, this is this deep. Like this got deep, fam. Like I didn't know all of this. So then now we, uh, we get we get down into it and whatever. I mean, I say. I mean, like, my, this is crazy. Like, Bob was really going through it. And I really wanted to know more about Bob's life and his mental state at the time and all that he was going through. And the movie felt more as though, when we did talk about the personal bit, um, it felt more as though it was coming from Britta's perspective. Now, granted, Bob's not around anymore. Fine. We understand that. So, naturally, the documentary is going to surround um, the perspective of the people that was in his life at the time. But it felt mostly from Rita's perspective. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I just feel like it felt it was coming from mostly Rita's perspective and less about Bob's state at the time, Bob's mental state, what he was going through, what he was feeling. And I feel like in order to be able to get that, you would need to pull from people that were in his life at the time, not just Rita, but from his children. What is this, What was his children's perspective on, on, on him at the time? What was his friends, his colleagues, his fellow musicians, people that was in the band with him because it was Bob Marley and the Whalers? What were the Whalers saying? You know, what was going on there? How did they break up? Why did they break up? Because remember, it was Bob Marley and the Whalers before he came Bob Marley. You know, so what did go on right there? So, like, what them have to say about it? His manager, um, the producers, all the people that worked with him. I just wish that more... I feel like if more people um, put had their input, I would have get a full, well-rounded picture of Bob, you know, in his entirety, in his, in his personhood, in who he was. Like, I felt like I needed to know more. Like, I wanted to know more, you know? So, 
Yeah, I don't know. It, that, that's the part for me where it fell short, but everything else was definitely really good. And the actor, Kingsley ben- Benadire, who played Bob, killed it. Killed it. Like, he did such an amazing job. Like, everybody was saying that, oh, you know, um, whatchamacallit, Young Bob, the actor that played Young Bob, really did such a good job. Um, r- let, me look for, let me look for who he is. I forgot his name. Let me just look it up one sec. Yes, so the person who played Young Bob is... Juan de Jean Henriquez, or Juan de, de Jean Henriquez. I'm butchering his name. I apologize. I cannot pronounce it. Um, who is actually Jamaican? Anyway, he did a fantastic job. I'm not trying to take away from that. For sure, he did an amazing job. However, Bob Kingsley, as Bob, took the cake for me. He did such a good job. Like, his, his um, pronunciation... His yes, the Jamaican linguist Dr. Joe, jo, can't talk today. The Jamaican linguist Dr. Joseph Ferguson was the one who um, assisted Kingsley Better Deer, or yeah, assisted him with the role, like helping him learn the Jamaican patois and learning the different um, intonations, you know, getting the dialect correctly and all of that things, and expe- more specifically, studying Bob himself and how he spoke. Because he he did such an image. I felt like I was watching Bob on screen. That's how it felt. And mind you, I've never met Bob because he died long before I was born or even thought of. However, however, the, the, the what I've seen of Bob, what I know of Bob, and what I've seen um, like from YouTube and other things of his shows and, and, and his interviews and stuff, Kingsley did such an amazing job. I literally felt like I was watching Bob on screen. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like his... His um, brand, um, rendition of him, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So, Bob um, Kingsley did it for me. Did it for me. He was so good. Rita's accent, the actor that played Rita, um, n- needed work. Not gonna lie, the accent didn't need some work. I never like it. But she did do a really good job portraying Rita Marley because every time she was on screen, I felt Rita's pain. I felt Rita's pain and frustration. Like you could just see it on her face, in her body language. The, everything that she did, you could literally feel it. She really embodied Rita at that time and what she was going through with Bob. Because as we know, Bob never did too faithful to the thing, right? Bob did have him wife, but him also did have one of them. You see me? Him did do him thing. Him did do him thing. So naturally, it was it was really hard for her. Um to be with him because and she even said it in in a scene towards the end when they were in Paris um Rita had stormed out because Bob saw her talking to this guy and it looks as if flirting and whatever so he came over there well upset you know well vexed well well vexed I say who the man that we are talking to Ray 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 so she stormed out and he went after her and they had a come they had an argument in the street and she's like because he was saying, oh, you're my wife. And she was like, yes, I'm your wife, but I, I also have to be a soldier. I have to be a soldier to be your wife. And I felt that. I was like, yo, yo, that tough still, you see me? Because she really had to go through it um, with Bob and the whole team. Because it, it was, And I imagine it was really embarrassing for her. Because can you imagine being someone's, this legend, this musical legend's wife, and you're his backup singer and everything. You're literally his ride or die. You go through, film, you get gunshot in your head because of him. Because remember, in the opening scene, if you haven't seen it, this is an obviously spoiler alert. In the opening scene, um, well, not in the opening scene, rather. It's more of like the third scene when they're at the house and... They're just chilling. Bob is in his in his yard chilling. Rita is about to leave, right? Some gunmen came in and shoot up the place. Rita got shot in her head, right? Like you get shot for this brother because of his brother and 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 his belief and and his movement and whatever. And you forgot through all of this. How is fear? How would you feel being in those shoes, boy? Me not me not really think say me not stop at them something. You know. After that, me not just call it call it judge because what you mean? I take up ten and a woman after that, and you get shot on my head for you. You must say mad. Me not do it. Me not stay. You see me? So I I have to applaud Rita because till till today she still remains faithful to Bob's estate and his legacy and continues to build on it. You know, because now there's the Bob Marley Foundation, or I think it's the Marley Foundation, something, something so. I don't really know all the nitty gritty, but yeah, it was, it was truly that 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 scene, that whole thing was amazing. It was really, really something else. And speaking of which, when 
the movie came out and everybody was the the Marley family was addressing it and talking about you know this is what movies about da 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 whatever, whatever. one of his side bees one of you see me one of the women them when they used to in a things with came forward talking about how nobody asked her for her perspective nobody came and asked her because she was a, a part of Bob's life too they started the third they had a kid together Ray 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 now right let us let us let us address it let us. Let us address it, right? <laughs> I understand that she was definitely a part of his life and she had a child for him, so much like a lot of other women. Much like, nobody else piped up. She was the only one that piped up. Mind you, she was a Mr. Maker and she was known in the media. Fair, right? And she loved Bob and she cared for him and whatever Bob cared for her too. That was very clear. However, however, have some respect for the family, for his, wi- his wife, and the foundation. Why you gonna come on it and why you come on big big social media and say, oh, why nobody asked for my perspective? Why didn't anyone reach out to me and whatever? Mind you, her scenes in the movie <laughs> were shown. However, she didn't have any speaking lines. She didn't have any. There was no dialogue. You just saw her coming to his door. You saw her. They were leaving together hand in hand in another scene. She was just about, right? So they definitely included her in the movie because, like I said, she, 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 like she said, she was very much a part of Bob's life. We get it. We know it. We saw, we, we saw it. However, they didn't give her any speaking lines. There were no, there was no dialogue. There were no lines whatsoever, which was hilarious. <laughs> it was a little funny and it felt a little shady, but, um, I mean, it, well, it was what it was. You know, you weren't his, she wasn't his wife. She wasn't his wife. Neither were the other women. And nobody else piped up. Nobody else said, oh, you never asked from my perspective. Go to the movie, da, da, da. Like, why would you go to the, the, the lady as a woman? You can come to her as a woman, as the wife, and say, oh, my perspective needs to be included into the movie. Like, she's suffered enough embarrassment. Rita Marley has suffered enough embarrassment, enough pain, and whatever, going through this the first time. When she's making a movie, why does she need to go through it again? How is that fair? Come on, man. Come on. Come on. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Yeah, man, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Like, mm-mm. 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 Suffered once enough. Once is enough. What is enough? What do you mean? What do you mean? You got to see it in 4K for the world to see again that, that, that your man and she point out. Like, come on. Come on, girl. Get it together. Nobody wanted to see that. So, Pernod, aside from that, um, the, the the concert towards the end of it where Bob is seen um, uniting both leaders of the People's National Party and J- Jamaica Labour Party is and forever will be um, an iconic moment because I mean, like I said, it was a se- it was a serious thing that had gone back in the late in the in the um, late seventies, early eighties, as it relates to the political civil war. Like people that were JNP, um, JLP, and people that were PNP, never did I agree eye to eye. Like people that bust shot, like it was serious that there were there were uh, armed officers on the road at all times. There were states of emergencies, you know, curfews, the whole shebang was going on at the time because it was it was a lot that was going on, you know. Um and people were in danger. And when Bob was seen as like this beacon shining this this, this shining light, this this beacon of hope, you know, this this something to hold on to. Um, for that, for that time, times would be better, and that things would change, and it wouldn't. What you call it? it? Things would be better because people were dying by like people that dead, people that dropped like flies. So it was. So that really changed things. But you know, initially, Bob wasn't really for it. He he fled to England, and his Rita and he told Rita and the kids to go to um America because of what happened in the beginning when. She got shot and they almost killed him too. But I think it like grazed him or something like that. Actually, no, I think it, he did get hit, but it was nothing serious. Like he did survive, right? Obviously. So, yeah, so he dipped because he couldn't believe that his own people, his own fellow Jamaican people, um, whom love and rate and whatever, did that to him, you know? Um, and I'm not sure who sent out the hit for him specifically um, because I remember they one of the parties was saying that bob's views were swaying towards the other and that's what caused the shootout to happen in the first place at his yard so 
it's because of that why he was like, you know what? Forget it. I'm out. So he dips, goes to England, send Rita Goff, go America to his mother's yard with the kids and say, no. Kind of done with everything, right? So, so yeah. And then while he was there working on his album Exodus, and which went platinum, which went crazy, um, while he was working on it, um, the two gunmen actually t- that works for both the JLP and PNP, those gangsters, I think they were the ones that 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 that, that, that sent out the boys to to do the hit on him. St- too, actually, they were the ones that say, you know what, we need to have a peace concert because things need to change. Mind you, they're having this conversation when they're in jail. Them say, you know what, we're candidates. Like, we need things to sort out. Things kind of wild right now. We're in a jail. Like, people are dead. Bear things are gone. We need to have, like, like, a peace concert to bring back the, um, the love back into the place because this not work out, yeah? So, when them get released from prison now, them say, ah, make a tr- quick trip to England and link Bob because him have to, him have to run the thing. Because if there's anybody that people are going to look to, I say, yo, yeah. So, I run up from Bob, I say, yo, Bob, come on, come back to Jamaica, do this thing for us. We re. Of course, he was very reluctant at first because, I mean, hello. One, the Mayor Godman, two, like, them don't need to send a hit up on him in the first place. Like, he was not for it. It's after talking to Rita and his manager and everything. That's him saying, you know what? All right, fine, I'm going to go back to Jamaica. I'm going to do this thing. But he was very reluctant and he was very skeptical of the whole thing. Is when he reached back to Jamaica now at the airport and him see all the people outside cheering him on like, yeah, Bob's back, Bob there. Ray, Ray, things are going to be all right. Again, Ray. That's when he started to feel, you know, yeah, man, I actually can do this and things are going to be all right. And him go back home. Him see the holes I'm in the wall from the, from the gunfire and everything. And it was a lot. It was a lot for him. But, you know, easy me, he managed to, you know, hold it together. Because Bob was a really beautiful soul, but he was beautifully broken. You know, he was beautifully broken. And he had a lot going on personally from his abandonment, abandonment issues, you know, all the shit that he went through with his dad, growing up in a single parent household, you know, being lost, not really know who he is, to finding Rastafarianism with Rita, you know finding his music, doing his thing, and then him get diagnosed with cancer. I decided to say, no, I'm not cut off him too. I'm not going to do that. just accept said this is what it is. So it was a lot for him. Like, he was really going through it throughout his early childhood. And then in the 30, mid-30s, now he get years when I have cancer. Man, man, stress out. Stress right out. But in, the, in spite of it all, he put... Everything that he was feeling, I believe, he put everything that he was feeling, everything that he was going through in his music. And that's what really, really, like, changed the game for him. Changed the game for everybody, you know? So, yeah, man, um, when he came back and did a peace concert, had the two parties, um, party leader members come up on stage, shake hands, reunite by the place. And, yeah, and uh, that's one of his most iconic moments. That's what people, that's one of the things that people know him for. And that's what really, like, transcended him um his career and his and his person and made him to this you know amazing human being bob's way of thinking bob's mind is is truly beautiful to have witness to, to have witnessed like i can't even imagine what it must have been like to been alive at that time and to see bob in person and experience it like it must have been insane which is kind of why i like talking to old people i like to know <laughs> what them think about them t- them things there, you know what it go on and everything the country's been through so yeah, it was it was truly something. Bob is truly a legend, and it's it's really amazing. The love for Bob really, really has never died, and I don't think it ever will because you know Bob, like I said, is a legend, and his music really will live on forever. It's so wholesome. It is so poetic. It's it gives you hope. You know, it gives you courage, and yeah, I think that's what that's what's about. Cause and then Rita said something so poetic towards the end when Bob was saying that oh you know him just wants some peace in him life like him can't believe like him get diagnosed with can- cancer and all these things and she was like you know sometimes the messenger has to be the message and a serious thing you know sometimes you yeah, just have to accept that this is your faith that's what it is and sometimes it's, it's a little bit sad but the point is to get is to get the word out to inspire people to change people's minds to influence them for the better so that you can leave the world a better place than you found it, you know? And that's really what it's all about at the end of the day. So I'm very, very thankful for who Bob was and what he's done because it needed to be, it needed to be, we needed that at that time. Like Bob's 
um, rise to fame and everything that happened in Bob's life was needed for that time and everything that he's he's done it needed to happen in that time you know because like I said the the place was a madness back in the day so yeah man shout out to Bob shout out to Bob for real like he really did the damn thing but yeah if you haven't seen the movie you should definitely go check it out it's still in theaters so you still you should check it out watch it and thing and it's done really well even though there are so many mixed reviews because honestly my movie rating for this for the bob marley movie is a seven out of ten because like i said i want to know more about bob, bob's life but because i already know so much about the history in terms of like the war and all that so i just want to know more about bob personally but um in spite of that like it was a really good really good movie the actors did really well and i'm so happy to see so many jamaicans on screen and i was like oh I'm, 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 i was gassed i was like yo jamaica people on the big screen that's what i'm talking about you know because the film industry in jamaica is not that big so it would be really nice to see more um directors actors really really do something on this scale um so yeah because I've, I've seen a few jamaican movies but they're only ever shown locally so to see them, to see a movie at this magnitude, um, was was truly special and truly really really beautiful for the Jamaican people. And really made us feel really proud to be Jamaican and just get excited about seeing people on the big, seeing our fellow actors or people that we've watched forever or that we know, per some of us know personally, um, on the big screen all over the world was just truly truly special. So yeah, man, if you haven't seen it, definitely go check it out. Watch it. It's a it's a good vibe. Um, I actually plan to watch it again. <laughs> so, but yeah, man, thank you guys so much for listening. This has been another great ep- episode. Too. Doing a thing, we're doing a thing, we're doing a thing. But yeah, like I said, if you ha- leave a comment and I'll be sure to read your feedback on this week's episode. And thank you guys so much, so much for listening. If you have any advice or questions for me, if you want to chat, link me up on Instagram at Nikki Neats. That's N I K I underscore N E I T E S. Nikki Neats. Yeah. Love you guys. Big up yourself every time.